Hey everybody, this is your brother, your friend, Emmanuel De Jesus, and I'm happy to be here with you again on YLC TV. Listen, there is a word from the Lord for you and for those that will be on the other side of your share. So we need you to share this video, share this broadcast, because someone is going to receive a breakthrough because you shared this video. I want to give you just a few more moments to share. Let us know in the comment section where you're watching us from, who you are and where you're watching us from. And as well, don't forget to click like on this video. And for those that are watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to YLC TV on YouTube so you can get the notification on when Revive Us Ministries is live here on YLC TV. Well, we hope you already shared, that you already commented. We gave you a few more moments. We gave you a few moments to do that. So let's go into the Word. The, in the Word, we're going to go into the Bible in the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 2. And we're going to start from verse 1, the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, for this moment that you have given us to speak on your word. May this word be a blessing to everyone that's watching. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want you to write in the comment section tonight's topic. Tonight's topic is we need another Pentecost. Come on, write it in the comment section. I'm going to write it with you right now. We need another Pentecost. We need another Pentecost. Why do we need another Pentecost? Well, I think the church needs another renewal in this season. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to always be connected with the Holy Ghost in this day and age. We're living in a time where circumstances all around us, we can see chaos all around us in our nation and in our world. We just, we're still in a pandemic, but we've seen the seriousness of why we should not be so attached to go to a building, but being attached to the Spirit of God. We've heard a lot of messages about how throughout the whole pandemic, oh, we couldn't rely on somebody laying hands on our head laying their hand on our head or going to the church house because we were out of church for almost a year oh we've heard all of that but now it's time for us to talk about why we need another Pentecost why do we need another day of Pentecost why do we need another day where we can just speak in tongues and and feel the presence of God why do we need it why because as believers we need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit I want you to write that in the comment I need the power of the Holy Ghost I need the power of the Holy Ghost the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 11, it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes, so we can see that the, the John the Baptist is talking here. He's, they, they're thinking he's the one. He's the one that's coming. Oh, he's the one that they speak of in all these prophecies in the scriptures. But yet he's letting all of them know I am not the one. I'm baptizing you in water for repentance. But the one that's coming after me, oh, will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes, we need to repent before we receive the Holy Ghost. We spoke about in the last video when we were live the importance of surrendering. We spoke about why is it so important to surrender unto God that if we want to have that peace of mind that and go into that place of rest, we need as believers to surrender our will unto God and repent, sacrifice ourselves and put our will in the hands of God and follow what he wants us what he has commanded us to do after the repentance we must see here that he says i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but after 
after me. There's one that's mightier than who I am. Whose shoes I can. I'm not, I'm not even worthy of wearing his shoes. Oh, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes, after you repent. It is important to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, to receive the fire of God in our souls. It is important for us to receive the power of God. On this day, we can see, oh, that when the day of Pentecost, this is verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place in one accord. Yes, they were united together. They were united as a church. They were united as a people because Jesus had told them, go to Jerusalem and wait there until the promise comes. And they were waiting and waiting, and they were in one place in one one accord when we want another Pentecost when we want another filling of the Holy Ghost in our churches when we want another um, another outpour of the presence of God we must take in account that when we want to seek the presence of God together there's the word we have to seek the presence of God together we have to seek the power of God together if we want to see another day of Pentecost they were all with one accord in one place and because they were all in one accord oh, they were working together they were working together as a team they were all in the same mindset they were all in the same purpose in one place in one accord and after that we can see and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind we all heard this this may sound cliche this may sound Oh, a lot of repetitiveness. Uh, repetitive. This is sounding like a lot of people. We we already hear about this that we have to receive the Holy Ghost and fire that we need this. But it is a reminder. It's a reminder that the church needs to have that even though we can sing, that even though we can do community outreach, that even though we can have the money in the bank and the properties and the buildings, that we can have the amount of people in our churches. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of God. Somebody say that in the comment section. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. And not only was there a sound and a rushing mighty wind. Oh, but it then said, and it filled all the house. Mm. It didn't fill 25% of the house. It didn't fill 50% of the house. It didn't fill 75% of a house. It filled all the house where they were sitting. In other words, since they were all in one accord, all of them received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Since they were all in one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven and it filled all the house. Listen, when that wind, when that fire comes in the house of God, oh, everyone has to feel something. Even those that aren't, uh, oh, that feel spiritually uh, dead, that they feel that they can't, uh, that they feel, they feel that spiritually uh, they're no more or even they must feel something because when the presence of God fills a place uh -huh, when the presence of God fills the atmosphere of a room everything every living thing has to feel the fire of God each of them were waiting on the Lord together all of them were fighting all of them were together working together for the glory of God to carry out is his will in the world. But not only were they united in purpose, oh, but they were united in prayer. <laughs> oh, yes, when we're looking and seeking the outpour of the Holy Ghost, my brother and my sister, we must remember that we must be united in prayer. Oh, not just united in prayer, praying for God to send an outpour of the Holy Ghost, for God to send the outpour of his spirit. But they prayed together, but they also prayed with and for 
for one another. Mm -hmm. They prayed for with and for one another. They weren't just praying, oh God, fill me up with the Holy Ghost. Oh, but they were also saying, Lord God, fill my neighbor up with the Holy Ghost. Oh, they weren't just, that's what together means. Let us all receive the Holy Ghost. They were not just praying for themselves. They weren't doing selfish prayer. They were doing a corporate prayer. They were praying together because they were seeking the gift that they all needed. The gift is not just for the leader. The gift is not just for for, oh, the leadership of the church. The gift is not just for the bishop or the pastor. The gift is for every single believer. Nothing builds unity in a church anymore <laughs> than carrying one's burdens to the Lord in prayer. Nothing builds the unity in a church oh, than carrying our brother and our sister's burden in prayer. Oh, that chemistry, that unity was in the room and it was so strong that when they were praying together, suddenly the sound from heaven came and descended. And the fire of God took over the tongues of the believers that were in that room on that day. And verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, yes. It, it, verse 2 says, And it filled all the house. Uh -huh. that, that rushing mighty wind filled all the house. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. But then verse 4 tells us that because of that much rushing mighty wind, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. <laughs> they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Not only were they united in purpose, prayer, and in prayer, but they were united in power. Yes, because they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So, oh, what, it's so beautiful. It's so great to know that when you pray together, that when you fast together, that when you're working together, oh, you shall also be united in power. You shall shall also be united in power in the spirit of God and because you are united in power this unity will also produce the results that we are looking for oh they were preaching the same message they believed in the same things they carried the same burdens oh and they went after the same God together they were united in power and since they were united in power oh they were able to pursue the spirit of God and pursue the will of their father. When you are united in prayer and united in power, you shall see the results. You shall see the results. You shall see the results. You shall see what you've been waiting for. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And many of us, many of you are probably asking, why do we need another day of Pentecost? Why do we need another Pentecost if it already happened in the Bible? Well, I want to let you know, my brother and my sister, that is asking that question at this moment. They were there, but we weren't there. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need another Pentecost. Oh, but you must be thinking, oh, that I'm talking about just when we're all together. No, you can have your own Pentecost alone seeking the presence of God as well if you go to God sincerely in heart surrendering and surrendering yourself to him and surrendering yourself to his will oh and you ask him oh sincerely God I want your Holy Ghost I want your power I want your presence I need you I want you I want your glory in my house I want your glory in my heart 
heart. I want your power in me. If you go to God in prayer, not only are we talking about a, a corporate Pentecost, oh, but we're also talking about an individual outpour of the presence of God in your heart. Oh, the day of Pentecost. You don't need to wait until you go to church. You don't need to wait until you go to the sanctuary. You yourself, my brother and my sister, oh, can go to God in prayer. Seek his face. Turn from your wicked ways. Oh, surrender yourself. And then he's going to hear from you. Oh, and when you tell him what you need, when you ask him if he can do it for you. Oh, if you go to him surrendering, he shall grant what you need. If you ask him that you need the power, he will give you the power of the Holy Ghost. He will give you the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, we all need that power. We all need the glory of God. We all need to be filled with the glory of God. We all need to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because when we receive the Holy Ghost, that's when we, that's when we receive power. You can be a believer, but are you a believer with power? You can be a believer of Christ, but are you a believer of Christ that has the authority? You can be a believer of Jesus, but are you a believer that has dominion? Do you have power, authority, and dominion where you can have the power and walk into a room that feels dead? And then at the moment you start praying, the atmosphere shifts. Are you, you a believer or that when you see someone that's possessed oh, with a demon, that you can say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that ungodly spirit and that person can be free. Are you a believer with power that when you walk into a room, all of the devil's demons and all of his workers and the devil himself can tell when a believer with power appears in his territory? I want you to comment that in the comment section and say, I am a believer with power. Mm. I am a believer with power power i am a believer with power i am a believer that has the power of god i am a believer that has the fire i am a believer that has the power of the holy ghost i am a believer that has surrendered my will and has seeked god has been looking for god to be filled with the presence and the Holy Ghost. I am a believer. That not only believes that Jesus died for me. But that I can also receive the Holy Ghost and fire. Which John the Baptist was talking about. We all need an individual experience. We all need, together we can seek the presence of God, but we all need our own encounter with Him. We can seek Him together, we can be united together in prayer, but you need to learn as well that even though I am praying for you, you need to learn how to pray for yourself as well. You need to want this so bad that you can pray for yourself. <laughs> you, you need to want this so bad that you don't need, you don't need to count on anyone else, but that you can count on yourself. We need to be united to have a day of Pentecost as a church, but you need to count on yourself when you want to receive the Holy Ghost and have a personal encounter with God. When we have that personal encounter with God, we can speak about God for ourselves. Now, after you've received the Holy Ghost, after you've received the Holy Ghost and fire, are you doing what he wants you to do? 
after you have received the power of God. Are you being a lazy believer? After you have been empowered by the Holy Ghost, are you doing God's will? Because you can receive it. But when you receive it, there's a much greater responsibility. There's a great responsibility when it comes to this power. When it comes to this anointing. When it comes to this empowerment from God himself. We need another Pentecost. But this time. Because some uh, before, most of us didn't take it as serious. But this time, it's different. This time, it's different. This time we're going to do God's will, not just for a season, but we're going to do it until his, when he comes back, until he comes back. We're going to stop doing this till he comes back. We're going to stop doing God's will, doing what he wants us to do when Jesus returns. That's what we're going to do. That's what we must do as believers. That when we receive the power of God, when we receive, when we receive what we've been waiting for, go and do his will. Go and do what he wants you to do. When he comes, that's when we'll have the last day. Going out. Preaching the gospel. Working in deliverance services and, and rebuking demons out of people. Because when he comes, we'll be in heaven. And we'll just be praising and glorifying him. What does this have to do with Pentecost? When you receive the Holy Ghost, you got to start preaching this gospel. Not only that Jesus saves, but he's also coming back again. Because we stop preaching that. To remind folk that even though we have this power, they can also have it. But we need to be saved because Jesus is coming back again. But till then, we need our own encounter with God and be empowered by the Holy Ghost. If you are someone that needs prayer, if you're someone that's been struggling and you need help, and you want to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. You can go right now. Go in the comment section. Let us know. Just say, that's me. That's me. Because we can pray for you. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're here to pray for you. And that's what it's about. That even though you can pray over yourself, but when you can't, we can pray with you can pray for you. So God, in the name of Jesus, we come into your presence tonight. God, we ask you that you help us have an encounter with you. Lord God, we pray over our brother and our sister that needs that prayer. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you allow them to feel a special touch of your anointing. That you help them, that you can touch them right now. And that they can feel your power and feel your Holy Ghost. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you that you move in that room that they're in right now. That you move where they are right now. And that they can feel your touch, that they can feel your power. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you. That they can have a personal encounter with you. And that they can feel your anointing. Fill them with your Holy Ghost. Fill them with the Holy Ghost and fire. That way they can have the power to do your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray this prayer. Amen.
Listen, we hope that this was a blessing to you. We want you to know that when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, you have a responsibility to do the will of God. That when you receive this encounter with the Holy Ghost, you have a responsibility to operate in that power that God has given you. We hope, once again, this was a blessing. And we as a church need to be united in prayer. That way we can be united in power. Because this day and age we're living in, it's just getting harder and harder. But as believers, our hope is built on the foundation that Jesus has laid. Our hope is in, is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This is your brother, your friend, Emmanuel De Jesus. You can follow us right now on the bottom of your screen, all of our social media platforms. You can follow us there. We just announced that on August 21st, Revive Us 2021 will be taking place. And we'll be announcing the place that we will be in this August. Listen, we want you to be with us. We want you to be in the room as we seek another Pentecost. As we seek another day where we can feel the power of God and be empowered by the Holy Ghost. And if you're a pastor and you need to be filled, if you feel like you're drained, if you feel like you're empty, you're running on empty... This is the event that you can come to where I assure you, you will be filled. You will be refilled and you'll be charged up for the season that God has for you. And you will be operating on full because God has something great for you. And it's good to preach and everything. But remember, you need to be filled sometimes as well. So don't miss out August 21st, 2021. Revivals 2021 is going to be awesome. It's going to be phenomenal. And I want to see you in the room. Remember to follow us because we have some major, major updates coming around. I am so excited with what God has been doing. And there's so many things that are happening. And we want you to follow us so you can receive the news before anyone else does. So God bless you. This is your brother, your friend, Emmanuel De Jesus with Revivus Ministries. And we hope to catch you again this same place, YLC TV. Remember to follow and subscribe to YLC TV so you can join us next Saturday. Catch us again next Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here with Revivus Ministries on YLC TV. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Amen.